I personally haven't faced any, but I have witnessed. Those vehicles that they carry overload, they will rough your clothes, they will hold you, bites, they will molest you. The next thing, he just, I just noticed that the hand raised my top up and he was using his finger. The next, I just turned and slapped him that, I don't know what's happening. Um, the most for me is really just um, some form of intimidation from either the driver or the conductor. Okay, so public transport in my own world really is just, um, for instance, you get to take a bus, you get to take a bike, or you take tricycle keke, like we know it here in Lagos. For me, it's what I call public transportation. So public transport for me, it's a means of movement from one place to the other here in Lagos. It's where you have to go out and enter a commercial bus. It could be taxi, it could be Uber, any means of a transporting you to where you are going. That is not your personal car. That is transportation, public transport. I'm okay, I'm going to share an experience. The bus was actually very full and crowded. I just realized that the person behind me, he just held on to my waist and it was at night. So I'm like, what happened? He said, I saw it, I wanted to fall. That's why I had to hold on to it. And there is zero respect for women in the bus. When they enter Porto, the vehicle will move, everybody will jam together. So in the process, she said when she came down, she saw her skirt waist, ah, what happened? Thomas. I am a digital marketer and also a student. My name is Ebikela Osarenko. I'm a HR professional here in Lagos. I'm a mother of three amazing sons. Hi everyone, my name is Okpayemi Adewali Kikelomo. I'm an HR generalist, L&D specialist. My name is Mrs. Ajibike Omiri Williams. I am the Yaloja of Ashade Markets in Keja Local Government. Hello everyone, I'm Noura Deep, Programs Manager at the Institute for Transportation and Development Policy, ITDP Africa. And at ITDP, I work to design and implement high quality transport systems, non-motorized transport, and policy solutions that would make cities more livable and sustainable. I'm Adewale Alade, a professor of urban planning at the University of Lagos Department of Urban and Regional Planning. And I specialize in urban transportation, mobility, and logistics. My name is Olamide Ejo, and I'm the Executive Director of Lagos Urban Development Initiative, a non-profit organization based in Lagos, Nigeria. And we do advocacy around non-motorized transport, sustainable mobility, public space, and an overarching theme of climate change. As a lady, it's different because um, entering the public transport, there are, there are obviously guys there, and the way they are treated, even by um, the conductors, is different. Especially when it comes to the issue of change, they are willing to fight them and harass them. But for a lady, they can calm down to a bit. The difference is that women cannot rush the way men are rushing, especially closing time, because women, they don't have strength to rush like men. Thankfully, there are a lot of places now where, a lot of bus stops where um, the park management has sort of organized it, where you get there, you have to queue up. But you see in places where you don't have to queue up, see eh? There's a very, I'm sorry to use that word, a gangster lady, that's when you can find your way, like just push people. Uh, you're annoyed, but you cannot pass it out because you, you're thinking, ah, if I stand up to this man, let him go and slap me or just do something. Both the drivers and the conductors, when they see a lady, they tend to be more harsh. They feel like they can easily get them intimidated, of course, just because the person is a lady. But they also don't have any choice here in Lagos. Whether we are being bullied or not, we eventually would still have to use the transportation system we have. Keke, downfall. Uh, I used to enter bus, even the beginning from the time of Molwe. But these days, I enter Korokwe if I don't go out with my vehicle. 
I use public transportation to, to my place of work. You see those guys, the keke guys, they're the bad guys. So if you need to go somewhere on time, you get to use them because they know how to maneuver their ways. Yeah, I use the yellow buses, the one they call Danfo here in Lagos. After taking those classes in the morning, I have to run some errands, like also going to work. So after work, I have to go to church in the evening. Then that is another navigation entirely. If I cannot drive or take the kids to school myself, I have a tricycle guy who I usually call. He picks up the kids and I, drops the kids off in school, then takes me out to the bus stop where I take another tricycle to Ikeja. Then I get down and walk into my office. So for me, 80% of my commuting in Lagos is really tricycle. So when I leave the house, I won't say it has been completely nice. Monday to Fridays, I'm going to walk from, I stay at Jibo. From my bus stop, I bought a bus to either CMS, so I can either go through CMS or I go through Obalinde. So if I'm going through CMS, I bought a bus from my bus stop to CMS. Then from CMS, I bought another bus going to a hotel roundabout. Then from a hotel roundabout, I bought shuttle buses directly to the office. That would drop me just in front of the office, and I'm able to navigate my way down. And coming back to the house, the same route to I use. Then, for instance, I'm going to church. It's a trackable distance, and the days I feel very lazy, I just bought a tricycle. That would drop me just in front of the church streets, and I walk down myself. My own is to go to my markets sell and come back on time. Actually, I normally leave market before six because I don't want to enter into traffic. So, but in those days, it was so hectic. Going to pick children in the school, you want to go to your shop. Actually, I retire from the bank before I enter market business. Uh -huh. So in those days, you want to go to work, you want to go and pick children, you want to meet up your office, you want to, a lot of things. But things, I think they are getting better when you compare with those like 20 something, 30 something years ago. You know that they've slashed 30% from the fear. And it's convenient, you got to listen to the radio, you got to watch the TV search anytime we want to air. It's highly convenient. It's very okay. It's very excellent. Um, in certain areas, they are safe. Like for journeys from Surulere, like I said, from Surulere to Oregon, in some certain bus stops, they are safe. Like Ojo Elegba, it is not safe there. That's why you always have to guide your properties very well. Places like Shita, it is not safe. Places like Ojota, it is safe to one extent because that place, number one, is always busy. Yes, our transport system is safe, yes, and no. So if it is late, it's not safe. Governments still have to look for what they can do as regard that. But if it's during the day, it's okay. Lagos State government has tried and they're still trying. Um, you see a lot of renovations of bus stops, just ensuring that there's a de designated place for people to stop. It gets to a particular time of the day, you are scared to use the pedestrian bridge because people get robbed on that bridge. I mean, those bad guys don't send you, they can fling you over. For me, rather than I use a pedestrian bridge at 7 p.m., from 6 p.m. down, I would find a time, I would rather cross the road, I'm serious, because people have had like really ugly experiences trying to use the pedestrian bridge, for um, particularly at night, because those bad guys just hang around. I don't understand why we have people selling on these pedestrian bridges. It's not a nice thing. There are times when I've bumped on people's markets and I had to say, hey, sorry, sorry, sorry. I need to keep apologizing. Sometimes I'm walking on the pedestrian bridge and someone is telling me, shift to the left. I'm shifting, I'm moving to the left. Someone that is selling on the left hand side is telling me, move to this. Like, I don't understand. Do you guys realize I can't see? Well, number one is the road. In that area, government has a lot to do. When it rains, and the road is all muddy, all those potholes, there is no how you go home without body ache. Like, it's not possible. 
See, can Lagos State government just help us beg? You see these buses and these tricycle guys. You don't have to pack people like sardine, like load us into in, uh, in that vehicle. Because there are times that I have to pay for two seats, you know, just to get that comfort. All the stress I passed through when I entered that Biaruti, I felt comfortable because they put the AC and we are not many, no standing. So they need to provide more of those vehicles because the population is increasing every day. Advocacy is like very key. A lot of people don't, like a lot of people are not aware of persons living with disability. There are times when some public transport drivers or conductor would tell me, oh, we can't carry her because she's blind. They need to stop looking at persons living with disability as beggars because that's like the default thing that comes to their head and their mind. Um, I know there are times when a boarded bus going to a particular place and they are, they've not gotten to that particular bus stop and they tell me to highlight. It is what we live with here in Lagos, so life moves on. I would say more BRT lanes because so far it seems like BRT are more safer than every other transportation. Mm. But like railway system, train can even carry more than what 10 or 20 vehicles can carry. It's safer. I think in Lagos here, <laughs> we have everything. We have um, um, the ferry, buses, we have tricycle, we even have, I mean, they've, they've banned bikes in some areas, but we have bikes. Then we, as human beings, we need more enlightenment. I'll suggest that we have more rail, train rails, actually, going to different or all locations around Lagos. Another way for improving the safety, the comfort of commuters is improving the neighbor workability by uh, city planning, adequate city planning to cater for um, workability in neighborhoods because in neighborhoods there are many short distance travels every day. You know, access to, uh, to shopping facilities, access to recreation facilities, access to school for school children. If workability is greatly improved in neighborhood through city planning, this will uh, improve the experiences of uh, all genders, including women, children, and the old people. I only know of, I guess, human rights. That's just it. Yeah, I know that there's a law. I'm not aware of this law. Uh, if it's not related to transport, I don't know whether there's any law. But if it's as regard domestic violence or sexual harassment, all that, I am aware. I'm not aware of that the policy is there. This ASAP let him move from being a draft to becoming a law. By presenting the draft transport policy to stakeholders in Lagos in 2018, the only critique of um, lack of gender consideration in the draft transport policy came from a woman, and that is Professor Tai Batlawansin. I mean, this situation confirms that women inclusion in critical transport and urban planning policy agendas is a necessity. And I must say that currently, Lagos does not have any broad-based transport policy. The transport system in Lagos is managed through many regulations with no consideration for gender differences that exist among transport users. Uh, the Cairo Metro is was recorded to be one of the most secured systems because it has women-only sections, so women felt more secure riding it. Also, stations and terminals need to be designed with security in mind. The system should aim to have women occupy at least 50% of the jobs in areas such as ticketing, driving, mechanics, management, and beyond to ensure visibility, representation, and participation. 
There are various research documents, publications and tools that people can use that deal with exactly this issue of gender and transportation. These tools and these publications really give a practical uh, solutions. They give practical solutions to how we can really think about um, how women use public transport and making sure that public transport is safe, accessible for women. One example is a project that we've worked on, which is um, the Gender Guide. It really gives solutions to how we can design better public spaces and uh, infrastructure. Women and men have different expectations from a transport system and different perceptions of security. It can be very tiresome. Very, very tiresome. Terrible. It wasn't easy. All through the time that I was pregnant for two of my kids, my second and my third, I used public transport and the experience wasn't really good. Public transport has the good side and it has the bad side. The aim of documents like these, these tools and publications, as well as this documentary, is to ensure that we have an inclusive public transport, a public transport system for all. Public transport for all. Public transport for all. Public transport for all. Public transport for all, though. <laughs>